So we're going to now continue to travel into the past, um, but with an important twist. Um, so as a, as a short, very short introduction to um, our next guest, um, I want to remind us that cities are populated as much by unrealized architectural projects as realized ones. Um, Zaki just showed us the extraordinary um, Louvre uh, Abu Dhabi. Um, but in a sense, behind uh, every time you see uh, a st uh, an important, um, historically significant, iconic or non-iconic um, piece of architecture, often there are a uh, uh, hundred ghosts behind them of all the buildings uh, and all the projects that, that never did happen. And, um, and Abu Dhabi and Dubai are no exception in this, uh, in this, uh, in this matter. Seminal architects were responsible for ambitious plans which never materialize, but whose drawings outline fascinating alternative histories and futures. So our, um, a few words about our next guests. Um, Ahmed and Rashid bin Shabib are cultural advisors to His Excellency the Minister of State, Zaki Nusebi, at the Office of Public and Cultural Diplomacy in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. That's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> we need to work on the acronyms. Um, Ahmed and Rashid both hold degrees from the University of Oxford in uh, geography and urbanism. Um, and many of you will know their work, certainly for the last 10, 11 years, as publishers of Brown Book. And I think um, that was a, a very important project um, that links very closely, I think, to what Zaki was talking about and even what Hans Ulrich was talking about, the, the, the importance of not forgetting um, these, uh, these centers uh, of Arab culture, uh, whether it's Kuwait or in, in, in Palestine or um, even extraordinary uh, Baghdad, uh, Tehran, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this, uh, I think this has formed a very, very important corpus on um, the history of uh, Arab urbanism um, over the last uh, 50, 60 years. So will you please join me now uh, in welcoming Rashid bin Shabi. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Shimon, and thank you for His Excellency and, of course, Ambassador. So this is a really exciting time. I have 50 slides in 15 minutes, so I'm going to try to figure out how I'm going to do this. But as, uh, as Shimon mentioned, um, our interest really lies with the field of urbanism. And what I want to do is try to tie back uh, what the past was specifically to what it is currently. And I think, I think a lot of people imagine what uh, Saadiyat Island or all of these different islands, how is it connected to the past? And I really want to try to build a narrative around the role of, the, uh, of Sheikh Zayed and his, his role as a nation builder. And really the importance of how he gathered people together in building a form of uh, social gathering, but really his interest in civic space, institutional capacity, and of course nation building. So it's critical to really understand the role of, of His Highness Sheikh Zayed's uh, late legacy in the role of culture and tying that back in. And I think he's influenced most of our lives, but specifically what I would like to cover is his role in uh, Saadiyat Island. And I think that vision came about from the very beginning. I think what people tend to imagine is that Saadiyat Island and the Louvre specifically comes out of nowhere, or it's just a project that was just realized last year or a decade's worth of effort. But the reality of it is it stems um, far back when the UAE started, and, or even, even further before. And uh, the late Sheikh Zayed's role in developing the urban fabric was very much hands-on. He was very much interested in trying to understand um, the built environment, but also learn from others. So he was a person that was very curious in learning how the built environment is, hands-on, taking people's advice, and being on site to realize what these projects are. And this is a very, uh, very important picture to me specifically. It's not necessarily looking at the built environment, but looking at, at, at the environment with the built environment, and I think that is critical, the nature element of, of, uh, of his late vision in the built environment. Um, and of course, civic buildings and, and his active role in trying to imagine 
how these civic spaces would be and how it would serve the people and how it comes about. And, uh, of course, I'd like to mention Dr. Abdurrahman Makhlouf, who was very much hands-on in the planning process, uh, where he was side-by-side -side, uh, with the late Sheikh Zayed and trying to imagine what these public spaces are and how they're realized. Again, showing you pictures of him consulting, getting advice, understanding the environment, and, and trying to make this realized. Um, so these are more of him looking at plans. So I'd like to take a moment just to uh, talk about uh, Dr. Takahashi, um, who was one of the first master planners of Abu Dhabi. Uh, he graduated from Columbia University, and he came about from the, uh, the Japanese ambassador in Kuwait, where he uh, graduated again from Columbia, living in New York, and tried to reimagine what Abu Dhabi uh, was to be. And he really believed in the grid system and reimagined how, uh, in a sense, this piece of land that was surrounded by the ocean and along with many islands, how this would come about. And he worked closely with Sheikh Zayed to realize this vision. But in particular, there are endless uh, sketches of his work, and I highly advise that you research a bit about Takahashi. And I see Chiho over there, who helped us a lot with the research, uh, trying to realize it. And, uh, but again, the public spaces played such an active role in it. So again, I, I'd like to take a moment to speak about uh, Henry Kolbeck and the, and the Zayed Theater, uh, the Zayed Sports Stadium. This is a very important project because what it is, is in the early 70s, one of the most iconic architectural projects that was realized in Abu Dhabi was central within the mainland of Abu Dhabi. It was iconic, it was a civic space, it brought people together, and that was one of the priorities within, within this type of project. And this is quite iconic, and I think it still lives on today, so I highly recommend that you visit it, and it's, uh, it's quite uh, unique. But again, the point that I'd like to make is one of the most iconic buildings had that social gathering element that had that public space, and I think that was really important. And again, when you start to imagine what the Louvre is uh, today compared to the ideas of the past, I, I don't think it's that distant. And it's on the 200 that I'm not, if people didn't notice. So. Um, yes, to go back to Saadiyat Island, and I'd like to keep coming back to it because I think it's a really critical point to look at the past and how does that connect to the future. And specifically, Saadiyat Island is a thought pattern that, that uh, comes together uh, as a project with, with different uh, mixed uses, uh, cultural, of course, arts, living, institutional, educational, when it comes together. So I'd like to take this opportunity to further expand on the notion of islands. This is something that's not foreign from the, to the UAE. And I'd like to talk about three specific projects. One is called the Sea Garden Island Project by Cedric Price. I'd like to talk about Lulu Island, uh, designed by Oscar Nemeyers, and then the Deira Island by Rima and Rahel Patela, which I think are three critical projects. So the first is Cedric Price's project, which is called the Abu Dhabi Sea Garden Project. And it's, <laughs> I see Hans really excited about it. But Cedric Price, of course, is, is a, uh, wait, let me get my notes. Of course, they are lost. <laughs> so back to Cedric Price. So he's considered one of the most prominent thinkers in the field of, ar of architecture. He was an educator and of course worked for Jane Drew and Maxwell Fry and Goldfinger, but really provoked a lot of thoughts. He didn't realize many projects, of course, for those that have been to Regent uh, Zoo. Uh, he has uh, the Birdcage, which is a fantastic project. He had the Fun Palette. But he in the early 70s, I think, re proposed a project called the Abu Dhabi Sea Garden Project, which is this unique kind of, uh, uh, th this is a kind of portrait picture of, of how he imagined this, but it was, an, it was a man-made island proposed off the coast of Abu Dhabi, and the idea would th uh, that it would have um, different m mixed uses, but it was mostly for leisure, and again, coming back to this notion of public space, where boats would moor, you'd have a, a park, you'd have uh, recreational spaces, uh, you'd have an aqua club, you'd have uh, different uh, public uses. And I think this, this is really important to, to think about. Such a daring and bold project. This is not so distant from what the Saadiyat Island is today. Back in the 70s, for them to, re to try to imagine such a project is very original, but not very distant from uh, His Highness's vision. And I think this is a very critical project that needs to be studied. The second project that I'd like to talk about is the Oscar Nemeyer's project that started in 76 but really came, up, uh, came about in 81. Of course, for those that are familiar with Oscar Nemeyer's, he's a Brazilian architect, uh, well known all over the world uh, for his modernist projects, specifically in, in key projects in the Middle East, in Algiers, 
Um, and he also proposed a lot of projects in Saudi and, and the UAE, but were never realized. Specifically, he really concentrated on Lulu Island, which is that piece of uh, land over there, uh, not very distant from Saudiyat and the main island. And his project was really important because the way he imagined was this huge monorail that would go through the city, and then, and then there would be different recreational projects. So you'd have a, a cultural center, a zoo, a residential elderly complex and an island. So you can see this kind of walkway that goes in the middle right up. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. So, this is, so, so you'd walk onto this plot and then you'd see uh, animals on the bottom. This would be underwater and this would be underwater. I don't know how he imagined this project to be, but it was quite daring. But uh, of course, social welfare was very much central into, this, uh, into his policy and I think it was shaped by the agenda. Uh, different uh, public spaces, he imagined different uh, civic spaces, desert island uh, yachts. Um, and so these are very unique, again, when you think about that type of project and that scale. It's very original and, and quite unique. And the last project is one specifically in Dubai. It was designed by Rael and Rima Patela in the 80s. Of course, this is a Team X uh, photograph where all of the most uh, prominent architects at that time created a collective and they were part of that and, and they really pushed forward against that. So this was the project that was proposed. It was called the Deira Seafront uh, Project. And this is the, uh, this is the creek front, this is Shindaga, this is Al-Fahedi area, and then you had these different projects. So they really imagined this project to be an extension of the city where it would expand and, and connect to this type of land. These are more scaled images. You'd see an access to this. It was kind of, in a sense, Venetian, or a waterfront project. I don't know what they were thinking, but it was really interesting. Um, this is a close-up to the mod. Oh, sorry, can you? Oh, maybe I think I missed half of it. And so um, uh, you can see the different uh, mixed uses within the project. Um, and so these were all waterfront projects. They proposed a mosque as well and a sports stadium. Um, and it was, it was quite daring at that time and in the 80s to propose such an island. And when you think about Palm Island and, and those those types of projects, it's not so distant uh, from this ideology. So I'd like to go back to Saudiyat Island and conclude uh, on my 50th slide. Um, the fact that how distant is this image or the late Sheikh Zayed's uh, perspective on creating a civic space that celebrates culture, that allows people to come together to the different projects, and, uh, or specifically the Louvre, uh, designed by John Novell. How different is John Novell from uh, from Cedric Price or Oscar Nemeyer or Raila and Rima Patela. And I think this is such an important point that we are not deviating that far away from the late Sheikh Zayed's vision. Or in essence, or most importantly, we're continuing his legacy, specifically on the cultural front. And I think this is an important point to, to set. So really connecting the past and the future. And I'm happy to answer any questions later on if anybody has any. So thank, thank you very much. much.